All right, so we're gonna jump out of the, the slides and we're gonna go to a fee rate setting calculation. Like I said, we got this spreadsheet from Northwestern and I'm gonna pull up a chair and sit, sit down because it'll be a lot of manipulation. Um, so they let us, they give us a spreadsheet with no problem and they actually give us the code to, to break it. So we've made some changes and you guys will have access to the, to the spreadsheet. So we've done this in the past and it's always been kind of a little bit hard to see. So we'll, I'll try to zoom in and zoom out as much as we need to. It looks a little different than it did on the projector. So hopefully this goes a little better. So as you notice when you start, there's a whole bunch of tabs down here at the bottom. The spreadsheet is meant to start from tab one and then work your way to tab, the last tab. And by the time you make your way to the last tab, you're going to have your fees for each of your service lines. So the first tab is just a description of your services. So do we have questions so far before I jump into this actually um, about what this is going to do? Do a lot of you have multiple fees within your cores or the cores you're thinking about creating will have multiple fees for different purposes? Like one test will be this price, one test will be this price. <clears throat> you'll put all of the tests in here. And as you, if you notice, if I scroll all the way down, it, it's built in enough for 68 tests. I have um, had people recently tell me that they've used this from the class. We were just at the Research Expo last Tuesday, and there were a couple of people who had taken the class, this class who said that they've used this. And, so it's actually worked out for them. And we do have a core director who uses it. Not Krista, hers are a lot different than using this, but uh, we, we do have a core director who uses this spreadsheet every year since we've rolled it out. So you're gonna put the name of your recharge center. So we'll just, just name it core, core one. Um, your org or your cost center. So we're 46050 here in the cancer center. And then your facility. There are little comments throughout to kind of help you along the way. So facility location, including the room number, and we'll just say um, 325 Ackerman. All right. I won't fill in all the boxes like that. Anything in green you'll notice in the spreadsheet is, are things that you need to fill in and are going to be required. And so your full name of your service and um, did I skip a box? Okay. So we'll just do we'll just do a couple um, and fill things in as we go. A little a couple things. So test B, and we're gonna stay with the first three, so we don't keep having to scroll down the spreadsheet. Um, and then you can put in a basic description of what those services are down here, and then. You can answer these questions or don't answer these questions. Some of these have, these have drop down boxes. Um, so we'll say these are all research related. And are human subjects involved? I'm gonna put no, but obviously if the answer is yes, then put yes. Um, and then do provide services to external customers. We'll just put yes for all of these. And then you can put a list of all of your external customers. So it's all in one place. So it's always there for a reference. Or you can leave those blank. Those don't really pull in to anywhere else. And we're going to make these applicable for 2017. So now we've just put in and gotten our basic information about our services. If you don't know what your services are, that's going to be the first step. You have to figure out what do you want to provide before you can even start this. But if you do know or you're a seasoned core, you can just go ahead and put your services in there. So now we want to put in the effort of billable hours. So, it's, so if you notice from just the description, places that were in green that we filled in are now have moved over to they will fill in the other tabs. That's why you have to start with tab one, because they will start to fill things in. 
So now we need who works in our core. So we'll put um, the director and we'll put tech. I'm just going to put their roles as their names just so that we're, we're used to them. But you, you would put their name and then put their role underneath. So then how many hours do people work? So total, total hours per year. Typically, this is 2080. Um, but someone has a calculated, not every hour that you work in can be billed. Um, but then you have, and then you also want to then bill in your vacation, build in your vacation hours, your sick hours, and any holiday hours. So the university, most people get 135 hours of vacation time and 113 hours of sick time. These are all pieces of information you can find on the, the university's website, or you would find it on the Nationwide Children's website to know what, are these, what, what level of vacation sick time are these people eligible for. So then you want to fill that in. So then, um, and then holiday hours. OSU has, I think this number's, this number's wrong, but because I think it should be like 80. I think there's 10 holidays. So we in the, in the Cancer Center, and this is something we've just made one of our policies, when we're calculating things on an hourly basis, we use the number 1,600 because six, basically um, that includes their vacation time, any sick time they wanted to take off, any walk around time, going to the bathroom, going to meetings. Those are hours we can't bill for. Those are hours that they're not going to be able to be productive or run a piece of equipment. So when we're calculating salary time, we base it on a 1600 hour model. And these numbers kind of show like right now this calculation is going to base it on 1622 and say out of this person's full FTE, they should be productive and working 1622 hours. So that's why we just use the basic 1600 hour model. Um, this 1950, like I said, it should be 2080. It was reduced by the 130 hours to calculate for going to the bathroom, going to meetings, having people stop by your office and talk, those types of things um, are ready. So they reduced the 2080 to 1950 and then reduced it again by the vacation, holiday, and sick leave. So then, so we have our both, we have our director and our two techs listed, and they're all basing on 1,600 hours. If you have, oh, this, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. It actually calculates later um, what I was thinking. So then percent on recharge and plan subsidy. So let's see what our note says here. Enter the percent of available effort charged to both recharge, so in your, that's your fund, and to any plan subsidy listed on the summary tab to reduce the rate. So if you have any, if you want 100% of this person to be charged on the recharge rate or the, in your services, you'll put 100% here. So all, both of our techs should be at 100% because they don't do anything else. They just work for the core. But the core director might have other obligations at the university. They might be a professor, they might have clinical hours, et cetera, and maybe only 25% of their time is spent actually on the core. So only 25% of their time should be built into core services. So when, as I put in those percentages, it then dropped that, those percentages down to here for what percentage of hours should be built into the fees. So then I need to say, so not for non-service, and then so then now the spreadsheet goes out this way for all of your services. We only did the first three services. So on administration time, what percentage of the core director is spent on administration? Uh, oh, so sorry, you put in hours. So let's say 203. So 203 hours out of the 406 is spent on administration 
just actually managing the core, doing, not doing core facility work. And then, and now for service one, how many hours does he provide? Actually providing the service. And we'll say 50, and then he spends another 50 just supporting the service line. So you don't have to use both of those columns. You can just use one. The difference between the columns are if the core director actually provides a service, like in Krista's core, she actually provides one of the services as the pathologist. So her hours for that service should go in, would go into that column. But if she's just supervising a pathologist for that service line, that doesn't take up as much of her time. So she would put in what hours is she just supporting or answering questions about that service line. You don't have to use both. You can actually, if, if it's too confusing, you, don't, you can just put it all into one. It's not going to make a difference because the total hours are, should add up and it should, um, all of it will get rolled into the fee.